Hello everyone, Jewel here. You know, sometimes even a big RPG fans like me also needs a break. Playing RPG games 24-7 will not give you any enjoyable experience at all. So it is actually important to play games from another genre for a change of air. Since we are going back to the classic platform recently, I thought it would be cool to recommend my best PSP games of all time. Even though it is a classic games, but trust me, it still gives you a lot of fun. Alright then, let's get started. Half Minute Hero is basically a collection of four gameplay modes that revolve around the hero, the princess, the knight, and the evil lord. These tales span hundreds of years, but they are all connected by the fact that the ultimate evil is back and trying to end the world. If you like RPGs, Half Minute Hero is a refreshing take of the genre, and if you have never been into RPGs, it's simple enough for anyone to enjoy. It's just easier to point out the few things that are rough around the edges instead of listing the tons of stuff that's amazing. Multi-level dungeons, first to small rays and battles, baby dragons, class skills that level up behind the scenes, humor, color, addiction, you could sit for hours and tell yourself how good this game is. I wish a few things were more polished and more user-friendly, seeing as how this is the third games already. But Pat Upon 3 is still a game that you will play for many hours. Ratchet and Clank Size Matters has everything a AAA PSP game should have. It's packed with fantastic single player content, has a strong multiplayer element, great visual and thematic presentation, and excels with on point gameplay mechanics. Sure, its camera may cause problems here and there, and its originality suffers when compared to the previous ones, but at the end of the day, Size Matters is still an excellent way to exploit your free time, and it's one of the few PSP titles out there that really shows off the system. Mega Man Power Up is a fun, polished remake that will win over all fans while seducing newcomers into the world of Capcom classics. Its cute art style isn't for everyone, but with solid gameplay and a treasure chest of extras, it's not like it matters that much. The only complaint here is the occasional slowdown when things get hectic, but other than that, it's a pretty slick package with minimal load times. If you are a Castlevania fan, you may as well pick this one up. Besides the difficulty and somewhat finicky jumping mechanics, it's an impressive game with a lot going for it. And if you are new to the series, this compilation may be even more worth your attention because of its strong components. Just remember the nature of the challenge because things can get real tricky real fast. It's a shame that some of the core issues with Fantasy Star Portable 2 are at least partially the fault of the limitations of the hardware. But come on, this is 2021, just play the game on emulator and you will be fine. The pacing and numerous options will keep you in pursuit of the next weapon and the next class of difficulty. The main storyline takes more than 40 hours of gameplay and guess what, you can even play this game with your friends which means more hours to play. Although Broken Destiny is nothing more than a portable version of Soul Calibur 4, the game is visually stunning and the size of the roster is admirable. What's most impressive about Soul Calibur Broken Destiny is how well it preserves its console counterparts formula while making very few sacrifices along the way. Although it's hard to strongly recommend this game if you already own Soul Calibur 4, 
it's safe to say that this is one of the most beautiful complex fighting games on the PSP and should please Soul Calibur fans. Resistance Retribution, probably one of the most complete packages ever to come to the PSP. It has an engaging storyline, a likable main character, tons of reasons to play the game, and one of the greatest multiplayer games we have ever seen on this system. The setup might tread a little bit too closely to its siphon filter roots, and the gameplay was less challenging as a standalone product, but those minor gripes shouldn't keep anyone from playing this excellent game. Don't worry if you have never played an East game before. The story of East 7 is self-contained and easy to get into. The real fun comes from the game's battle system, which features plenty of action. Even though the scope of the world is limited and the game requires some backtracking, I would still recommend this to any JRPG fan looking for an action RPG adventure, because the fast-paced combat and the boss battles are just too good. Square Enix are pretty big on remaking games. Let Us Cling Together is the definitive version of the Tactics Ogre. If you have seen what Final Fantasy Tactics The War of the Lions looks like on PSP, you will have a good rough idea of what this game will look like when you boot it up. It's a pretty game and those good looks aren't the only thing that's great about the presentation of this remake. The music has been remastered, new characters have been added and there are new story scenarios to help flesh out certain aspects that were lacking in the original. Anyone who loves depth, difficulty and story in their RPGs owes it to themselves to play this game. Portable Ops feels like one of the few games to live up to the PSP's promise, because it translates the entire Metal Gear Solid experience into something that can be easily digested in small amounts. The GPS and Wi-Fi scanning feature is excellently implemented. The online and single player modes are deep and there are generally plenty of things to do. Portable Ops is a difficult game for both newbies and experienced players. But the way in which the whole vibes of Metal Gear has been transferred to a portable platform impresses to no extent. Packed with challenging strategic play and tactical action, John the Ark is a phenomenal game that will keep you engaged for hours. Extremely deep gameplay, balanced tactical strategy with rich game mechanics, and intriguing twists on a well-known tale only scratch the surface of John the Ark which manages to deliver on all of these fronts. If you have been eagerly wanting to play strategy RPG on the PSP, look no further, because John the Ark is definitely what you're looking for. Playing Dissidia Duodecim Final Fantasy is like learning a new thing in life. It's intimidating and difficult at first, but the end result is always worth the effort. If you're a giga chat that doesn't mind experimenting, Duodecim is hugely rewarding and could be one of the best additions to your PSP library. The story mode should be taken with a grain of salt, but everything else you will find here is well worth the price of admission. Valkyria Chronicles 2 squeezes the smart, turn-based strategy and deep RPG-like customization of its PS3 predecessor onto the PSP with great success. The core experience is unaltered and the familiar hand-drawn art style has likewise been carried over. The small, often recycled battle maps are disappointing, but the game's few shortcomings are easy to forgive in the face of the same elegant, just like gameplay that made the first game great. They've got 
Final Fantasy Tactics The War of the Lions stands out as a great remake of a classic title. There are other small annoyances that the new version retains such as the camera which can be rotated and tilted but may not always give you the most helpful view. Even then, Final Fantasy Tactics remains a great game even by modern standards thanks to its finely tuned character development system, new content, and challenging battles that will have you using every trick in your arsenal. Whether you are a newcomer to Final Fantasy Tactics or an experienced fan, you will lose countless hours to War of the Lions. Siphon Filter Dark Mirror is a fresh air for the PSP. A shooter that offers not only intense stealth and action sequences, but also controls that work. The story isn't all that great, but the way in which the game presents it is simply amazing. Dark Mirror's campaign only lasts about 7 or 8 hours, but the action is both dense and intense. With everything Dark Mirror has to offer, including its great controls, varied campaign, and high-caliber presentation, Siphon Filter is easy to recommend to anyone who likes action games. Like the original Kingdom Hearts games, your hero travels from world to world solving smaller problems and working towards one ultimate goal. The real catch, however, is the battle system, as enemies materialize around the player. The system keeps the action fast and user-friendly, but also lets players customize their abilities to match their own playstyle. One of the complaints with past Kingdom Hearts games was that the minigames included just not fun. Fortunately, most of the minigames in Birth by Sleep are not only fun, but also tied in brilliantly with the main story. Overall, this is a must game to play for any Kingdom Hearts fans. Monster Hunter Freedom Unite is a quality product. It offers a thorough and interesting gameplay thanks to a considerable amount of collectibles and monsters. This game may have a steep learning curve, but as soon as you overcome the difficulty, you will find this game to be both excellent and fun, especially because you are able to play with friends in co-op mode. There is no surprises if this game will keep you attached to your PSP longer than you ever thought. Unlike the original, Crisis Core is an action RPG where battles take place in real time. The main story and subsequent gameplay is complemented by hundreds of side missions that can be accessed from any save point in the game. The music is charming and fits the overall style of the world. In-game cutscenes are also fantastic with detailed character models and finely crafted facial expressions. Not spoiling anything for eager players, but I will say that Crisis Core's ending are a must-see. GTA Vice City Stories is essentially more of the same, for better or for worse. It's a nice leap over what we saw in Liberty City Stories, but it still feels safe by many standards. The story is certainly subpar, but it still has all of the elements that makes every GTA game great. It's fun, doesn't take itself seriously, the gameplay mechanics are mostly great, and the world is a fantastic place to screwing around. Persona 3 is a well done story filled with interesting people, cool battles, and a ton of stuff to do. This portable version keeps all of that while adding in some battle improvements and boosts the replay value. Sadly, Persona 3 Portable loses some of its polish as the game ditches the anime cutscenes and free roaming. However, the heart of the game is still here and it's still awesome. Ghost of Sparta is gorgeous. Graphically, it looks better than a big chunk of PS2 games and is absolutely the best looking game on the PSP thus far. 
as far as the gameplay is concerned, there's nothing super unique here. But that is not a bad thing. You will still spend your time slaying countless enemies, traversing dangerous domains, and solving like puzzles. God of War fans or not, you definitely should play this game. Tekken Dark Resurrection is the best PSP fighter games for the system. It blows its competition right out of the water and everything from its graphics to its minigames to its multiplayer options are exactly what the PSP needs. It does absolutely everything well and offers a number of options we wish were in the PS2 version of Tekken 5. New modes, characters, and plenty of other additions not only make Dark Resurrection a fantastic fighting experience, but one hell of a great PSP game as well. Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker is a fully-fledged Metal Gear Solid game with top-notch production values and masses of content. It complements a great-looking stealth action campaign with a strong co-op offering and bite-sized challenge missions. With stellar presentation, great looks and sound, and deep, diverse gameplay, Peace Walker is an essential experience for portable games. It combines the ambition and quality of a full-size console title with plenty of novelties and conveniences to make it a superb portable experience. Chains of Olympus works as a prequel to the original God of War. Aside from its rather stunning visuals, the first thing that you will immediately notice about Chains of Olympus is that the developer has done a stellar job of keeping Kratos' moveset intact. Combat is extremely responsive and perfectly mimicking the console versions. The puzzle elements aren't all that difficult, but solving them does generally give you the satisfaction of completing it. Engaging from start to finish, Chains of Olympus is a mandatory purchase for anyone who owns a PSP. Alright boys, I think that's it for today. I'll be honest that I'm probably a little bit biased into some games, but hey, don't blame me for that. And feel free to express your opinion in the comment section below. Don't worry, this isn't my last time to cover up another genre in this channel, so make sure to subscribe to the channel if you don't want to miss it. Thank you for watching and have a good day. Peace.